All right, so one of the things we need to do in MP3 is that our client needs a way to identify itself to the server. So imagine that you're collecting a bunch of ratings for different courses. The idea is that you want to know what, you know, who the rating corresponds to. Now, the way that we're going to do this for this particular assignment is not the right way to do it. Um, in the sense that um, the right way to do it would be to require some type of authentication, right? So, you know, at least what I want to know is that the person submitting the rating, you know, has like an at Illinois.edu email address or something like that. So I'd probably want them to log in. Um, but, you know, this is a little bit better than maybe a particularly naive approach. Uh, part of the reason to do this, right, is you think about like, who do I want to be able to rate courses? Um, well, one problem with other course rating sites and professor rating sites like Rate My Professor, for example, is it's very hard for them to figure out whether or not the person who's submitting the rating has any business actually submitting a rating for that class or that faculty member. Like you can go to Rate My Professor and rate a professor that you've never had for a class and just say this person is terrible or this person is great or whatever. Um, and so, you know, when we collect data like this, we do care about where it came from, right? And we want to maybe, we actually might want to know a couple more things. We might want to know, did the student actually take the class? So when you fill out the ISIS forms, for example, you know, those are connected to your student account in Illinois so that they can verify that you're in the class, right? You can't submit ratings for a class you didn't take, right? Because those ratings are particularly meaningful. Okay, but anyway, in our particular app, what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify the client using this thing called a unique universal identifier, or UUID. Um, and there's a couple of things. First of all, the question is like how to create one of these. And the second question is where to put it. Um, so here's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show, focus on showing you where to put this. Um, because you know, there's this file here in our project called Courseful Application. We haven't really done much with this. Um, it's been kind of there, hanging out. Um, and what I want to show you how to do is to set this up so that um, this is the place where you can store the, the client identifier. Now, the reason for this is that we've talked in the past, we have a couple of activities, right? Activities as part of the Android app lifecycle, they come and go. So when I go to a particular screen, that activity starts up. But when I close that screen, any information that activity held is gone. And so frequently you need a place in your app to hold stuff that like doesn't change or you wanna be able to have access to from multiple activities as the app is running. This is one potential piece of information like this. The way you do that in Android is by setting up this application class and then you can then access that in the activity. So I'm gonna show you. So for example, we have this courseable application that we set up. This is sort of a holder. This is a place where you can put things that you want to have access to for multiple activities. So for example, we've already put our uh, reference to our client, the thing that makes the network request. We've already attached it to the application class. And what that allows us to do, let me open, open up main activity, right? When main activity starts up, you'll see that it calls, it calls this uh, get application method that it can call because it's extended the activity class provided by Android. That returns an application. We cast it to a courseable application, and then we call this get course client. Well, what is that? Get course client is just a getter for this particular uh, type of object, and then we use that to make our network request when the activity is launched. Right. So this essentially allows us to have one networking client that's available to all activities in the app, which is important because um, given the type of app that we're creating, we assume that all activities are going to need access to the client to make networking requests. Right. Okay. So let's follow the same pattern, but let's instead use this to set up a unique identifier. All right, so right here, I've got my, uh, my placeholder for the client. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, this is gonna be a string, and I'm gonna call this client ID. Um, now what we're using for this, like I said before, is this thing called a UUID. Uh, and UUIDs are, are pretty cool. So let me show you what they look like. Uh, there's something called random UUID generator. Um, here we go. So if I go to uidgenerator.net, um, you'll see that uh, when I load the page, it actually uh, presents me with this uh, version for you UUID. And if you go to the same website, you're gonna see something different. So the idea here is pretty cool, is that um, anywhere, anybody anywhere on earth can create one of these unique identifiers and they should be always different, right? There's so much entropy here. Look at how long the string is. And every character uh, can be not only uh, digits, but also uh, some subset of numbers. <gasps> so the idea is that this is like a really, 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 really huge number. So imagine that like we pick a really, really huge number at random. 
the idea is that the, the likelihood of you and me randomly drawing the same number is so, so, so small that we don't have to worry about it. So we can just create lots and lots and lots of these and we don't have to worry about collisions, right? I don't have to worry about two people getting the same one. Uh, so if I refresh the page, I'm gonna get another one, another one, another one, etc. Okay, and you'll see a couple of these hard-coded into the test suites. Um, now, we don't wanna hard-code it into our app because we want every client to have a different one, right? Um, but it turns out UUID is something that's built right into Java. So here's how we can create one uh, as part of this. So if I do UUID, I can import the UUID class and then there's a random UUID method. Now this gives me back a, a UUID uh, object, but it has a two string, uh, two string method, okay? So now I've created this client ID um, and uh, you know I think Chuck Style's upset with something here, which is fine. Now, um, now how would I get at it? Well, there, you know, I don't think I need to, to show you too much more. Uh, essentially, you need to write a getter uh, for this UUID uh, so that you can access it. And then once you have that getter, I would refer you back to your main activity and some of the code we gave you, right? So essentially, uh, you get a reference to the application as shown on, you know, the previous line. And then from that application reference, you can then call, you know, get client ID to retrieve the client ID for your client. Now, the way that we're doing this now, so, so one of the reasons why you would do this in this type of app is that you don't want people to be able to manipulate your rating system, right? So we're now collecting ratings for courses. This is potentially sensitive information. People might get upset if their course has a really low rating. And so I not only want to, you know, there's kind of two steps I would want to take here. One is that I want to make sure that ratings come from people who can actually rate the course, but I also don't want them to be able to rate it a bunch of times, right? So let's say I took, you know, CS125 and I hated it, you know, and it's like, I'm, you know, I hate that Jeff Challen, you know, and so I'm going to rate the course over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and, you know, eventually I could basically submit enough ratings to cause the course uh, rating average to drop. Right? I want to prevent this. In order to prevent this, every client always needs to use the same UUID. Now, if you do this, the UUID used by your client is going to be, this, is going to be different every time it starts up. So it's not really going to accomplish that. If you want to, this is not required by the test suites, but if you want to, you could actually set this up to store the UUID that's been generated and retrieve it when the app starts up. There's a way to do this. So, you know, Android apps sometimes need to store a little bit of persistent state, right? So the idea is that, and, and apps on your device definitely do this, right? So um, actually, if you have an Android device and you can go into the settings menu, there's a way that you can basically like reset all of this information and that can cause the app to, to behave a little bit differently the next time it starts up. But there's essentially a way for an app to have your device remember some information by storing it in a file, essentially, on the device so that every time the app starts up, it would be using the same UUID. I'm not gonna show you how to do this, but you can certainly find instructions for how to accomplish this online, and it's not required in order to be able to pass the test suites. So, but this is, you know, how to get started with UUIDs. Um, really kind of neat way of, of just being able to create random identifiers for objects or data uh, in ways that might be useful as part of uh, my application.